Our scripture text for today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13. We'll be looking at verses 12 to 14. Amen? Press the share button. All right. It is interesting to know that many Christians still live their lives unaware of the battle that is being waged around us and have not taken heed to the warnings and the signs that are evident in our present time. When Paul told the church of Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God, he was liter literally encouraging us to be prepared for the battles to come. We are very familiar with the different implements or parts of the armor mentioned in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. But the Christian armor was already established by none other than Jesus Christ himself. None other than Jesus Christ himself. Because you see my brothers and sisters, when Jesus came onto the earth, he came into the world to bring a change. And in so doing, he had to face off against the enemy of our souls, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, that fallen angel. He had, to have, he, had, he had a battle with Satan. Satan tried to kill Jesus when he was a child. He tried to kill Jesus when he was a man. He tried to kill Jesus before he went to the cross. But guess what? He thought he had accomplished his plan. But we realize that Jesus said, I have the power to lay my life down. I have the power to take it up again. And on the third day, boom, there he was. And Satan was embarrassed, defeated, and his works were brought under control. So we look at this now, we try to understand, well, okay, Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God. But our topic for today is Christ, our armor. Christ, our armor. Because when we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the armor, the whole armor of God available to us. In Romans chapter 13, as I said before, Romans chapter 13, looking at verses 12 to 14, those last three verses in that particular chapter. I want us to take a look at this now, and let's see what it says. Mm -hmm. Here's what it says in chapter, in chapter 13 of Romans and verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Amen. That's our scripture verse for today. Amen. So what he says, the night is far spent. What does it mean? The night is almost over. We've been living our lives, my brothers and sisters, in an era and time controlled by the devil. But I want you to know that there is a change on its way. The night is far spent. Too many people have lived their lives in the darkness of this world. They put themselves under the control of the devil. So they are, listen, walking in darkness, living in darkness, enjoying darkness. But here's what Paul writes and he says to the church of Ephesus. Ephesus, the day is at hand. The day is at hand. It is coming close to the day. To the day. Listen to this now. To the final day. The day when Jesus is going to reveal himself to all the people of the world. When he's going to shatter the works of darkness and the revelation of who he is, if the light will come. Look at this now. Here's what he says. He said, let us therefore, let us, yes, let us who know Christ and those of you who are not in a relationship with Christ, let us take action, cast off. And that means what? To put aside, to get rid of the works of darkness. Because there are many people in the church, in the church, in the church, my brothers and sisters, who are still living in darkness. Who are still walking according to the rudiments of this world. Who are still indulging in the things of this world that are representative of the darkness of this world. So many people, even in the church. See, here's what he says now. Let us therefore cast off, put aside, or get rid of the works of darkness. Next thing he says is what? And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. The whole armor of God, as Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 6. 
that we put on the whole arm of God. Here he writes to the church of Rome and he says to them, let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on or be clothed or dress ourselves with the instruments of warfare, the weapons of warfare. Uh -huh. the, that's what the armor represents, of light. Because Jesus, remember now, Jesus said that he's what? The light of the world. But then he also came in, 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 in Matthew and he said that we are the light of the earth, the world. We are the light of the world. So if he is the light and we are the light, then he who was the light when he was here on the earth, shining and representing the Father, our responsibility then is to be small representatives of Jesus Christ. Okay? We are supposed to be small representatives of Jesus Christ, so we find ourselves in a position that we have to what? Put on the what? Armor of light. The armor, the, the, the instruments of warfare, the weapons of warfare, we've got to put it on. Why? Because we represent the light. Remember the back, this verse, verse, this verse now, it says what? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us cast off what? The works of darkness. And put on the what? Armor of light. Jesus Christ is our armor. As we go through this, we find that Paul is trying to get us to understand something here. He's trying to get us to understand something here. Look at verse 13 because we're going to look at the script here and then we're going to bring it together to, so you're going to understand why this is a topic. Christ, our armor. So in verse 13 he says now, in verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day. Not like in the night or walk in the works of, of darkness. Not in writing and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Paul give us a whole list of things here that we shouldn't be walking in. We need to be doing what? Let us walk honestly. This word here, walking honestly, means to walk diligently. To walk, walk circumspectly. Alright? To walk in, in a state of righteousness. He said, let us walk honestly. You say you're a child of God? Be honest in your actions. Be sincere in your actions. Huh? He said, let us walk honestly. You claim Christ as your Lord? You claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Walk honestly in the knowledge of who he is to you. He said, as in the day. What does it mean by the day? When the light is shining. The night is far spent. It's almost over. Huh? The day is at hand. Walk as children of the day. Not of children of the darkness, but walk as children of the light. He comes and he says, not in, and he's going to give us a list of things, not in, because these are the things that represent the darkness. So if Christ is our armor, we have to walk as if we are walking in the light as he is in the light. So now Paul comes now and he gives us this. As in today, not in rioting. What he means by that? And now we, we hear the word rioting and we think about people having a riot. They go into a, a, a community and they're breaking in buildings and, and, and stealing from stores and causing fires and all that stuff. But here, this word out of the Greek means having orgies, mm -hmm. revelings, carousing, huh? indulging in sexual immorality. He said, and drunkenness, and indulgence in drinking. So he says, not in rioting, and not in drunkenness. Huh? He said, not in chambering. What is that? Sexual immorality. And that word chambering here means when you're sneaking into rooms or chambers to have sex with people who are not your married spouse. That's what chambering means. Sexual immorality. And wantonness, sensuality, lewdness. You see, when you understand what Paul is talking about here, when you look at this list here, he's talking about the things that are in people indulging that are not members of the body of Christ. So therefore, we are not to, supposed to walk like we are pretending to be Christians, but we are supposed to walk honestly because we claim we are Christians. Okay? 
So he says not to walk in these ways. Huh? He says, no, the next one, not in strife. That is in quarreling and dissensions. Okay? When you, you, you're always in, 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 involved in things uh, with other people, constantly badgering and, 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 and having some sort of contention going on with people. He says, and envying, that's jealousy and malice. Paul says, let us walk honestly in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, and not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Why? Because we have put on the armor of light. We have put on the armor of light. When we understand, my brothers and sisters, that when we identify with Christ, there's supposed to be a difference in the way we live, in the way we talk, in the way we walk. Everything that we do is supposed to be different than the people in the world. Why? Because you see, when we put on the armor, when we put on the armor, my brothers and sisters, we have to be different. Because we represent something different than the things of the world. Look at this now, verse 40. He comes on in verse 40. And he says, look, Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 12, he says, put on the armor of light. In verse 14, he says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that word, but, is very interesting. It's a very important word because it's a conjunction. Bringing together what he said in verses 12 and 13 to help us to understand why we need to do what we do in verse 14. So in verse 12 he says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore what? Cast off the works of darkness. Cast it off. Remove it from us. Get rid of it. Huh? Put it aside. Undress ourselves from it. Okay? And put on the arm of light. Put on the arm of light. Okay? So now he comes in verse 13 and he says, what? Honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, nor in strife and envy. Don't walk or live your life according to the ways of the world and the people of the world, but because you have put on the arm of life, he says, but now, put ye on what the Lord Jesus Christ, put on Jesus, put on Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the world is full of so much fakery. So much fakery, so much masking. So much isms and schisms. Now the world is out there, they are all dressed up and representing the kingdom of darkness, looking like the devil, acting like the devil, talking like the devil. But we have the what? Put on the armor of light. And then we have to do what? Put on the Lord. Let me say I'm going to read it for you because I want you to get it. And this is not me saying this. But put ye on what? The Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on. Put him on. You say, well, Reverend Marshall, I can't put on Christ. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can put on Christ. Just like you put on, uh, you know, darkness. Just like you put on lewdness. Just as you put on the wantonness, just as you put on, you know, all of these different things that he just listed here, drunkenness and everything else, you put them on, you get up in the morning, you say, man, I need a drink. So you go and you get in, 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 in your cabinet, you put on a bottle, put your glass, boom, you take a drink. You just put it on. People can see you coming from a, 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 a mile away because you're drunk and you're walking, you're talking, you're acting. You're acting what? Wantonness. You're acting... You, 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 you acting um, in rioting, you are acting in chambering, in wantonness, in strife, and in envy. Your actions tell who you are. So he says, what? Well, but if you're a child of God, if you're a believer, if you're someone who accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have committed yourself to that calling, he says, but put on Jesus Christ. Put them on. Put them on. Let the world see you as a different person. Let the world see the light of Christ shining through you. So that the world will know that you are not like everyone else. So that you are there to make a difference. Because you see, here's a problem. Here's a problem. If everybody acts the same, we're all going in the same place. 
You feel what I'm saying? So if you are non-Christian and you're acting like all of these things that he said here, that we should not be dressing ourselves in. And everybody in that group, in that crowd is there, and hell is their destination, they're all going to go to hell. But if you are put on the armor of life and you claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you begin to act like you belong to Jesus, live like you belong to Jesus, talk like you belong to Jesus, walk like you belong to Jesus, people now have an opportunity to see a difference. We then become objects of change, but not only that, objects of choice. We become objects of choice. So people can see the darkness and they can see the light. And then they can look at the way things are happening to the people in the darkness and look at the way things are happening to the people in the light and they have an opportunity now to choose. To choose. So he said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and here's what he says now, and make no provisions for the flesh. Because you see, the flesh is what loves to indulge in the darkness. The flesh wants to get involved in all of these things, drunkenness and lewdness and envy and strife and, 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 and um, chambering and, and rioting. The flesh wants that. The flesh wants to be satisfied in this present age. But he says, look at that. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions or make no allowance or give me, don't put yourself under subjection to the flesh. To fulfill the loss thereof. Because I'm telling you, I've told you all before, I'm going to tell you again. Satan only has three tricks in his bag. He has three tricks in his bag. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the, loss of, and, and the pride of life. That's all he has. And if you can get into the first one, it's easy for him to get into the second one. And when you get into the second one, but believe it or not, you become so proud of who you are and what you have done, pride overtakes you. And we know that pride comes before fall. Yeah? So when we look at this now, he says what? To do what? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put it on. Put it on. When we read the letters of Paul, we see him constantly telling us how to do this. He said, be in Christ, 2 Corinthians um, 5, 17, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh -huh. And he says, put on the new man, Ephesians 4, 24, and Romans 13 and 14. He said, put off the old man and put on the new man. Uh -huh. He told us again in uh, that we have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, and Philippians 2 and 15. He said, for we have the mind of Christ. So if we can be in Christ, if we can put on Christ, and we can have the mind of Christ, we, my brothers and sisters, can identify with Christ. Because when you identify with Christ, my brothers and sisters, it shows a difference. When we find ourselves being like Christ, because we have put him on, we are in him, and we think like him, we identify with him, and because of this identification, we have available to us the attributes and authority that comes with a relationship with him. See, we can put on Christ. We can dress like Christ. We can dress in Christ. We can identify with Christ. Because we can live like Christ. I know you always say, you remember last time, you keep on going back to that. But when I came across this portion of scripture years ago, uh, in, in the book of Acts, and they talk about the, church, the people at Antioch who believed in Jesus Christ. Their lifestyle was so distinctively different than everyone around them that the people in Antioch noticed that they were different. And they called them Christians first at Antioch. In other words, they called them Christ-like first in Antioch. They were able to see the, 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 the manifestation of the person of Christ that they had heard about. They had seen it in the lives of those people who lived, those Christians who had gone to Antioch. And they called them Christians first in Antioch. Are people in your home calling you Christian? Are people on your jobs calling you Christians? 
I hear people in your communities calling you Christians, your groups, your club, your organization, wherever you are, if you gather among people, are they calling you Christians? Because you have put on Christ. When you live your life, do they see Christ in you, the hope of glory? Do they see Christ coming out of you? Do they hear Christ coming out of you? Do they know that you have a relationship with Christ? Or are you a secret closet Christian? Mm -hmm. So, let me give an illustration. A police officer has graduated from police academy. And he's given now his full uniform, his real gun, his real belt, and everything else. He has his badge. And he walks down the street, or he drives his car into an area, and he stops, and he steps out. And people look at him, and they recognize that he is a police officer. Because now he's dressed like a police officer. I know we have undercover officers, but I'm talking about those who are dressed or put on the uniform of the city or the locality in which they are, are working. And that person comes onto the scene. And the person can, the people look and they, they step back, they, they calm down, whatever it is, because now here is some authority, here is some power. That police officer, it might be one person walking in, the, in that beat. Might be one person walking through that mall, wherever it is, people see that person and they recognize what power and authority. Now he's only one person. But they know that that particular person is backed by the whole police force. From the commissioner or the chief or the, the sergeant or whoever it is in that particular area, they know that from that person to the top down to the person that they are seeing, there is a representation of the police service. So what am I saying to you? When you put on Christ, you're supposed to be operating in the authority and the power of Christ. Because now you have the whole arm of God upon you. Now we know Paul said in, the, in Ephesians chapter 6. He says now what? Oh, we, we, we find ourselves now looking at the armor that Paul talked about. The first one is that we are told to put on the belt of truth. So as a Christian, we have to operate in truth. Christ said that he is the truth. Jesus, John chapter 6, 14 and verse 6 said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the truth. So we have to live in truth. Based on truth. Speaking truth. Acting on truth. So that's the first thing that people have to understand. Because that's where our integrity comes out in the life, of our lives, to make a difference in the life of people. The, th the second thing we are told is that we have to put on the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness. We have to what? Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Huh? He's our righteousness. He's the one who lived righteously as an example for us to follow in our relationship with God the Father. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 30, it is saying, but of him are ye in Christ. What it says now? But of him are ye in Christ. In Christ, who of God is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Here's what Paul is saying to the church at, Cor at Corinth. But of him are ye in Christ. We are in Christ. So therefore, he being our righteousness, we have that breastplate of righteousness. So we have to live like Christ lived. He lived righteously before the Father. Jesus did not indulge in any lewdness, any drunkenness, any, any rioting. Or any of these things that Paul just listed in, in, in Romans chapter 13. He didn't. The next thing we are told is that we need to what? Shut our feet with the gospel of peace. I'm talking about Jesus being our armor. We were told to shut our feet with what? The gospel of peace. Jesus is our peace. Not is he only our peace, but he is also the prince of peace. That's what Isaiah told us. Huh? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. What? The Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And not only is he the Prince of Peace, 
but he is the giver or dispenser of peace. John chapter 14 and verse 27 tells us, Jesus said to them, Peace I leave it to you. My peace I give unto you. Is what it says, my peace I give unto you. So when we are told that, that we need to, all right, shut our feet with the gospel of peace, we have to learn how to share this gospel peacefully. Some people try to take the gospel and try and use it as a battering ram to get people to want to believe it. But listen to me, the script, the, you know, the story tells us what? You win more people with honey, more, more flies with honey than with vinegar. Just like people. You, you win them over with love rather than with brutality. Jesus never forced anybody to believe in him. And we as believers have to learn and understand that we have to love them to Christ and then he will love them the rest of the way. Love them to Christ, he will love them the rest of the way. Until we get to that point where we learn to learn to live in peace with all men, especially those who are the household of faith, we are dope, my brothers and sisters, we are just pretending that we care enough about people. So, he is our peace, but he's also the giver of peace. The next thing we are told is that we should take up the sheep of faith. Mm -hmm. We should take up the shield of faith. Well, I want you to understand. Jesus, as our armor, always exhibited faith in the Father. He had total confidence and reliance on the Father taking care of him. He was not afraid. Listen to what Jesus made some statements, my brothers and, sis and sisters, when he said, well, all that the Father has given me, I will lose no one. That's confidence. That's confidence. All that the Father has given me, I will lose no one. Not the one. No one can take it out of my hand. Hmm? But, but I want you to see this now. Jesus walked and lived in faith. John chapter 11 and verse 42. John chapter 11 and verse 42. It says here, and I knew Jesus is now by the grave of Lazarus. Lazarus is in the tomb. Mm -hmm. He's there now for days. Now, he comes to the graveside and, hallelujah, they're telling him, oh Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And, 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 you know, he tells him, you know, they ask a question, well, don't you believe that I am who I am? I am the resurrection of life? Yes, Lord. We know that you can raise us at the last day. And Jesus said, he prayed to the Father and said, here's what he said in, in, in John chapter 11, verse 42. He said, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people would stand by, I said it. This is confidence. I knew that you hear me always. When you have on the armor of God, when you are dressed in the armor of, of light, my brothers and sisters, when you have Jesus Christ as, your, as part of your life, or you are in Christ as he is in you, you can ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. We have, listen, we keep ourselves under a, a diminished level of opportunity because we do not learn, we have not learned how to really and truly put our faith, hope, confidence and trust in God. Because we don't really recognize that when we put on the armor, we have put on Christ. Here's what he says. I knew, and I knew that thou carest me always. Because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may, not, may believe that thou hast sent me. That they may have faith. That you have sent me. I have faith. Jesus is saying. But I pray to you and ask you. To bring Lazarus back from the dead. I know that you hear me always. I have that confidence that you will hear my prayer. But because of those who are around me. I'm asking you now. To do this. So that they may believe. That thou has sent me. That's confidence in God. You see I don't know about you. But I, I, I know but when I pray and I ask God for something, I believe he's going to do it. Well, some of you will say, you, 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 you're arrogant, Reverend Marshall. No, I'm not arrogant. I have confidence in God. And even if he doesn't do what I want him to do or what I've asked him to do, 
Yeah, because sometimes man get quality as well. But even if he doesn't do it, I will do just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even if he doesn't answer, I still will not submit to the authorities of the darkness of this world. I still won't. I'm going to live in faith, walk by faith, fight for the faith, contend for the faith, and my brothers and sisters, I will increase in faith. I don't know about you, but it's time for us to recognize who we are. As we put on Christ, we realize that we can put on all the full armor of God. All of it is part of His character, His nature, His attributes. The fifth one. We are told to take the helmet of salvation. We are told to what? Put on the helmet of salvation. In other words, have the mindset of Christ. Have the mindset of Christ. Jesus is our salvation. He's our salvation. Listen to this now. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who are confident that if they call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. He is our salvation. When you pray and you ask God, Father, in the name of Jesus, please save me. Please help me. Please rescue me. Please do that. You, you are, if you are uh, uh, experiencing a, a situation in your life and you call on the Lord and the Father, you call on the Father in the name of Jesus, you can be saved. The situation can be changed. It takes confidence to be able to call on God our Father knowing fully well that we have confidence in God. We have to put on that kind of salvation. We have to have that confidence that when you give your life to Jesus Christ that you are saved. Not will be saved, not will be saved, or may be saved. You cannot accept the fact that you are saved. God doesn't have saved people. Can I say that again? God does not have saved people. It's either you're saved or you're not saved. There's no two ways about it. And not because you say the prayer and say, Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That means you're saved. Because your words have to line up with your thoughts. Your thoughts have to match up with your actions. So say it with your mouth. A lot of people give a lot of lip service. But it is not in your heart. Or as we say, in your mind. And then they don't do what they've confessed to do. So what they have done is they have lied because they are pretending to be what they are not. So when things don't go right in their life, they'll turn around and say, this Christian did no work. Well, you were pretending to be what you were not. You pretended that you didn't like the Jesus Christ, but you kept on indulging in the things of darkness. You went back out again, you started living and writing. You started drinking and, and carousing and, 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 and living in wantonness and, and envy and strife. You are out there still doing the same thing you were doing before you gave life to Jesus Christ. So all you are is a pretender, a fluke, and a flaky. Because if you put on the helmet of salvation, your mind is going to be a changed mind. Your mind is going to be a changed mind. Let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. If you have the mind of Christ, your thinking ought to be different. Because if you have... And because, listen, if your confession is Christ, then your thinking ought to be Christ. And if your thinking is, is Christ, then your actions will ref, reflect Christ. Your words, your thoughts, and your deeds. If they all line up, then you have on the armor of Christ, and you have on the helmet of salvation. We are told to take the sword of the Spirit. That's the sixth part of, of the armor. We are told to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. We have to have Jesus in us. We have to be in Him. What did Jesus say? If I, you abide in me and my Word abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. In other words, there is no way you can have Jesus and not have His Word. There is no way you can accept the Word of God and not have Jesus. They are, listen, they are one. Jesus is the word of God. 
The word of God is the expression of Jesus. This tells us about Jesus. Jesus told us about this. Told us this. There's no separation. So we are told to what? Take up the whole, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And Jesus is the word. John chapter 1, and book this one. The gospel of John chapter 1 and this one. What does it say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. Mm -hmm. And the word was God. And I say is because it is still is. Okay? In the beginning was what? The word. And the word was with God in the beginning. And even when he was here. And the word is God. Or, let me say the way here. And the word was God. As John was writing it. So when we put on the armor of light. When we put on uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We are dressed in the armor. The full armor of God. Because all of it is Jesus. All of it represents Jesus. Jesus lived it out. That's why Satan can defeat him. That's why Satan can defeat him. Satan cannot bring him under subjection. Why? Because he was dressed for success. Man, he was the armor. And if Christ is your Lord and Savior, he is your armor. You have to hide in Christ. You have to be hidden in Christ. You've got to be hidden in Christ. Because if you're in Christ, you see the Old Testament writers, they will talk about he's our sword, he's our buckler, he's our hiding place, he's our high tower. That's the way that they saw him. That's the way they saw him. But in the reality of it, when he came upon the earth and he lived among us, we got a chance to see all of this. Now, yeah? we got to allow him to build the truth. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We shed our feet with the gospel of peace. We lift up the shield of faith. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we put on the helmet of salvation. And we take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus is all of that and more. And my brothers and sisters, if you learn to put on Christ, you have Christ as your armor. When we look at all of these attributes of Jesus, we have a better understanding of why we need to put him on. To be in him and to think like him. Can you imagine that? You can put him on. You can be in him and you can think like him. That's what Paul said. Because you, we can think because we have the mind of Christ. If you're a child of God, you ought to have the mind of Christ. In other words, a mind that dictates to you through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, how to live your life as an angel of light, a representative of light, as the soul that God called us to be. To be fully dressed in Christ means to be in a position where the power and authority of God resides in you. So that when you speak, honestly, it will take place. When you believe, it will come to pass. Because Christ is our armor. The scripture tells us what? Submit yourself therefore to God. How would you submit yourself to God if you don't even know? Like I told you just in the illustration of a policeman. When he goes into training, he has to be able to cast aside all the things that he used to do. So that he get what? A renewed mind because he has to learn now law and, and, and principle and ethics and everything else. Because now he has to go out there and represent the police force or service that he belongs to in the community in which he resides. And we have to learn to do the same thing. Because if it is to him, listen to me now, to him, Jesus Christ, that the demons tremble. To him they submit. And from him they flee. So when we submit ourselves therefore unto God, we could resist the devil. Why? Because we have the armor of Christ. The arm of God is on us. We have put on Jesus Christ. When Satan came against Jesus in the wilderness, guess what? Jesus said what? It is written. What did he use? The word. The word is all. Huh? He came against the second temptation. He said it is written. Boom. Why? Because he's dressed. He's our armor. 
When he came the third time, he put the Lord's soul again. It is written, the word, when you have the word of God and you have Jesus Christ in you, you are dressed for success because the enemy wants to come against you. So who? Listen to this now. It is to him that the demons tremble, to him they submit, and from him they flee. To be found outside of Christ is to be in the devil's domain, and you by yourself cannot defeat him. To be found out of Christ, outside of Christ, you are in the devil's domain, and you by yourself, you cannot defeat him. You can't. He's been playing this game for a long time. He's a prince of darkness. He's a ruler of this earth. So what do you do? You gotta put on the whole arm of God. You gotta put on Christ, dress in Christ, and be prepared to live a life that reflects Christ. So the best thing to do is have Jesus as your armor, my brothers and sisters. That's the best thing to do. Have Jesus as your armor. Because in Him, when you're in Him, guess what? We all win. We all win. When we have all the armor, when we are dressed in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what the devil does or the devil tries, we, my brothers and sisters, we will win. You know, I was thinking about this as I was preparing the message. You know, in the past, the days of old, when um, armies went out to war, the captain of the army would normally go forth with his, his army. Nowadays, these generals and they sit down in the backdrop and they dictate and they say, you know, platoon this, platoon that, you know, you know, go there and do all that stuff. But in the days when Jesus was on the earth, the generals and they went out to battle with their armor, with their army. So when he was going up front, the army that was falling behind him knew that they were following a champion. They knew they were following a champion. The new performing the champion. And if you understand that when you have put on Christ, He is the champion. He is the leader. He is the one who has defeated the devil. He is the one who has brought hell, death, and the grave under subjection because it is Him. It is His army. Here's what the scripture tells us to stand still and see what the salvation of the Lord. Huh? It is not our battle, it is the Lord's battle. It is not us. Then have to fight. What we have to do is to dress up and be ready. Stand up there. You can understand this. Let me see if I can just throw this into a picture form for you to understand. When the, when the Philistine army came against Israel, Goliath as from God came out in the middle of the valley. And he challenged the army of Israel and he said, Send me down your champion. Send me down your champion. And we will fight. If he kills me, we will become your servants. But if I kill him, we you will become our servants. All they needed was the champion to step forth. Goliath was the tallest man in the, in the Philistine army. Huh? Big and broad. Huh? About nine foot tall or more, they said. Then he comes here with his big, bellowing voice. Send me down, your champion. Let us fight. And God is a little shepherd boy. Hmm? A little shepherd boy. Yeah. Just like you, my brothers and sisters. Just like you. To go out into the valley and to take down the enemy. Yes. You see, David, David went down into the valley. And he told Goliath, you come to me with shield and sword and spear. He said, when I come to you in the name of the Lord, the captain of the host of the army of Israel. Yeah? When you put on the armor, David had faith in God. David's feet were shut properly because he started to run towards Goliath. He was a man who lived righteously, my brother and sisters. He had a mind for Christ. Uh, he didn't have a shield in his hand, but boy, he had a shield of faith. Uh -huh. His glories were girded with truth because he spoke truth to, 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 uh, to Saul and said, I kill a lion, I kill a bear, and who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the army of God? David went against Goliath with the, the pure confidence that God was with him. 
And when you put on Christ, when you dress in Christ, when you live like Christ, act like Christ, talk like Christ, you will find that Christ will show up in you and through you to make a difference wherever you are. You can have on the armor. But the armor is Christ. How many of us can put on a shield right now? Pick up a shield right now to go out there and fight. How many of us just want to put on a helmet right now to go and fight? How many of us are going to be putting on swords around our waist to go and fight? A breastplate? Who of us are going to be doing these things? But if you have on Christ, you've got all of that. If you have on Christ, you've got all of that. That's why Paul said, and put on. Look at it, verse 14. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. He says what? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on. Put him on, my brothers and sisters. Because when you put on Jesus, when you put on Jesus, you've put on the greatest power that exists in the universe. May God bless you today. May God bless you today. Put on Jesus Christ every morning before you leave your house. As soon as you get out of the bed, the first thing you should be doing is welcome Jesus. Say thank you, Father Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank him. And you go and put on Jesus in prayer, in praise, however you want to do it. Put on Jesus. Because when you get out there into the marketplace, you ought to be reflecting him. The world has got to see you as a representative of Christ. You're going to fight no battles. You're going to fight no battles. You don't have to fight any battles. He will fight for you. Why? Because you're dressed for success. Because you've got on the armor, the armor of God, who is Jesus Christ himself. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. So I know you're asking the question now, Reverend Marshall. What do I do? What do I do, Reverend Marshall? Tell me, what do I do? Well, you've got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior first. I mean, you can't put him on if you haven't accepted. You can't put him on if you don't want to identify with him. So the first thing you've got to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hmm? Make a provision for the flesh now. You've got to put aside the flesh and the things of darkness and make Jesus Christ the light of your life. So what do I do? Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I read in your word where it says that if I will confess the Lord Jesus and if I will believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. So right now I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my Ruler. The love of my soul. And I believe, Father, that you raised him from the dead. And now I ask you to please write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life so that I can spend my eternity with you. Here I am, Lord. Take me. And use me for your glory. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, we are going to do our communion. Hallelujah. If you have your communion, instruments of communion, you can take them out. And we will be able to commune, as Jesus said. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. 
Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let the man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not the sin in the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. May God bless you now as we bid for our communion. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said this is my body which is being shed for you he said eat it you make it then he took the cup and he blessed it he said this is my blood which is being shed for you for the remission of sins he said drink eat all of it you may drink Again, as often as you eat the bread and you drink a cup of the Lord's death, you drink it and do it in remembrance of him. That day, they had no benediction. They left and they went into the garden. Because you see, there's coming a day, my brothers and sisters, when we all have to stop and give account for all that we have done. Because come out of heaven is going to be a place where we'll be able to live eternally called the New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem is 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles high. A big glorious city that's going to descend from heaven and come with all the mansions that Jesus prepared for us. And we can live with him for eternity. So I don't know if you have made your decision yet where you want to spend your eternity. But I encourage you to choose to spend it with Jesus. A place where there'll be no night, there'll be no sickness, no sorrow, no pain, no crying, but it will always be joy, unspeakable, and full of glory in the presence of Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and with all the other saints who have made it into heaven. May God bless you today. May God bless you.